Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It's gray and cold today, and we had snow a few weeks ago, and I hear there's snow coming tonight. But you don't care about that. You care about listening to this new guest that we have on, and I'm super excited to introduce you guys to Kylie Wade with Organizing for Life. You're organizing the whole world, and it's going to be awesome, and I'm excited to hear about it. So thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you, and I'm hoping that our listeners will just love getting to know you, and I'm sure they can organize something while they're listening to the podcast. So that'll be fun. Okay, Johnson City Living Podcast. First question, you knew it was coming. What do you love most about Johnson City? There are so many things. I think um, since we moved here from LA, uh, the biggest perspective that I have is I can get somewhere that's 10 miles away in 10 minutes. (laughs) Isn't that cool? Like an hour. (laughs) Hey people, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Yeah. so I think that's been fantastic. In Um, LA, how, how long did it take you to go 10 miles? Oh, so I commuted 19 miles to work and it took me an hour and a half each way. <laughs> Holy smoke. So three out of, hours out of your day was in the car. In the car. So I listened to a lot of podcasts. <laughs> yeah. And there, I listened to, I think Jim Rohn, he called it um, the car academy or something. Like you can go oh, to school yep. and learn languages and do all these different things. He knew about all these people that were in the oh, cars. Yes. And so, yeah. Did you learn any foreign languages while you're in the car? I did not, sadly. That is that is one area that I have not delved into enough. <laughs> well, you can put that on your list. There we go. I'm sure you have an organ <laughs> a car list now that's organized well. So, yeah. where did you grow up? So I grew up in um, let's see, Pell City, Alabama. Okay. But the closest thing that people probably know is it's about 30 minutes from Birmingham. Okay. And so I lived there until I was 18, went to college at the University of North Alabama, then made my way out to Los Angeles yeah. for 10 years. What took you from Alabama to Los Angeles? So I, that's a big jump for a little Alabama <laughs> person, typically. It's a very big jump. And uh, so as a tennis player, but I also was finishing my degree. And so I said, what is the, you know, what is sort of that sweet spot between, you know, those strengths and those interests? Uh-huh. And then uh, a segue into the career that I wanted. I did get a PR marketing degree, but I kind of wanted to start with something different. So initially I went out to California to intern with the Tennis Channel. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And how did that go? Um, it went well. Was so this I, like, that was probably not that yeah. you're old, but I mean, the yeah. tennis channel is relatively new, right? I mean, it is. So, it's been um, about 10 years ish. Gosh, so I, I worked there for six years, and oh gosh, I'm like dating myself, of course. The Sorry. more I speak about and time, I'm getting way out. Yeah, I just, so I played <laughs> yeah, tennis growing up. I love the tennis <laughs> channel. Yeah. And it was, I was like super excited when it was like, mm-hmm. oh, we're putting it on YouTube TV. I was like, yes, tennis yes. channel. So we watch that frequently. Mm hmm. Um, so you, you interned there or worked there yeah. and then mm-hmm. how did you come? All right. So LA to Johnson city. Yeah. So, um, so there were a few more steps okay. in the middle. Little rock so, skips you know, across I the country. sort of, uh, transitioned, uh, you know, stayed within the sports TV world for uh-huh. a little bit and then went into, uh, the tech industry. And of course, Everybody's familiar with the shutdown of 2020. And so at that I heard a little point, about it. Yeah. yeah, it sort of was our push. Whereas every year we're like, we're sick of this traffic and that three hour commute. And so we said, let's go back to Johnson City where my husband's family is here. Uh-huh. And so we have such an amazing support system who we could not survive without. There you go. Uh, so that got us through the pandemic, through remote work. And then eventually too, things started to change with our offices and the way that they viewed that remote work. Right. And so. They made it permanent and we got to yes. fully firm up these roots here yeah. in Johnson City, which has been fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. Tell me about your husband. What's his name? Yeah, so his name is Joseph. Joseph. And so he grew up here. Uh-huh. He is fantastic. Um, amazing father to our two kids. Aww. We have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, both boys. And so oh. I am very outnumbered in my household. There you go. <laughs> You're just like Carly, my wife. She's the same. Yes. Yeah. And so it's wonderful. Um, you know, we have so much fun exploring the town, especially all of the little activities, the jump parks, the, you know, all of those kids yeah. things. We were at Chuck E. Cheese last night 
And uh, we just love too that we can come. We are starting to see more people we know everywhere we go, which is so great. Getting that small town feel and just that great community. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's awesome here. And yeah, the Chuck E. Cheese. I'm glad you're going. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm not going. But <laughs> we I would do. Go. Mitch, sure. you want to go to Chuck E. Cheese sometime? I love skee ball. Skee ball is fantastic. Yeah. Skee ball is fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Okay. So you were doing something else yeah. and now you're full time entrepreneur. Yes. Is that right? So I have officially made the leap. Um, what I was doing in my career in tech is a lot of project management, program management. Um, in more recent years, I was doing a lot of training program management. Okay. And so how that translates into my business and the work that I do is I do have a few different revenue streams in my business. So Good for you. first and foremost, especially for this local audience, is the in-home organization services. In-home <laughs> organiza organization services. I need to organize my mouth. <laughs> no, um, we're totally fine. Yeah, so were you fastidious by nature as a child? Like your room was perfect and... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. I, just... I do remember those moments where my mom very... Um, very much was pushing me to clean my own room. But um, but I think a lot of it too was living in small apartments uh, in okay. Los Angeles. Yeah. Every time something new came in, I was like, we do need this for our lifestyle or the evolution of our lifestyle. Right. But we just felt like we were outgrowing our space so quickly, yeah. especially when we had our first son in LA. Oh, so wow. then we had three people in a loft apartment and we were figuring out how to fit every machine that would get asleep <laughs> with a newborn. Uh, every single rocker, device. We don't have room device. for a crib, much less a baby. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's gonna. We'll figure it out. Exactly. And all those like you know, two a.m. Amazon purchases. You're like, this will get us sleep. And so, constantly things coming to the door. How does this all fit? Yeah. You know, what are our systems for maintenance? And I felt like I was spending most of my time just endlessly organizing. But what I was missing was that decluttering piece that says. This is what makes you know it more manageable as far as the amount of items that I was keeping in my home. And so that drives a lot of what I do today, of course, is how much time do you want to spend maintaining your home? And as each of those items come in, what burden is this placing upon you sure. as far as that maintenance, finding a home for it? And those symptoms, of course, can be the clutter on the island, you know, the, the things that are just coming in bags that are dumped at the doorstep as you're coming and going from kids events. And Marie things. Kondo, I think she yeah. says like everything has a weight to you. Yes. Like even when you bring it in, even if it's magically put away somewhere and you don't ever see yeah. it, it's still there. And it's one of those things that you mm -hmm. has an energy, I guess, to it. And it really does. And then similarly too, I just love that feeling, especially when I'm working in clients' homes and I'm like, it feels lighter as I'm filling my car up and saying, let me get these items out of your house. Like, right. As you are making these tough decisions right now, uh, cause so many of them have been so wonderful to work with in right. that they've hit that point where they're like, I can't, I've had enough. I just can't take it anymore. And they're ready. They're ready to make the changes sure. and they know that toll that it's taken yeah. on their lifestyle. And so, so much of my business organizing for life is how can your home support your lifestyle? And so that's through, you know, those in-home services, as well as the education and inspiration I provide through my Instagram, which, which I love to do as a way to say, here world, this is what I've got. You know, here's your decluttering tips, prompts, you know, maybe you just need a little extra nudge or inspiration yeah. that day. And so it's been so wonderful building that community as well and, and just feeling the joy and, and saying like, here, here you go world. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, my wife, she is a, she's a great organizer. She loves to do oh, that and that. it brings her joy and it brings me joy too because we'll, we'll declutter mm -hmm. and get rid of stuff or she yeah. will and I, I enjoy it when I dive into it but I'm more like, I think I'm more like the, the client that you're looking for a little bit because I'm like, <laughs> All right, that's that's a mess over there. I'm just gonna not deal with it and move yep. on and deal with the other things. I do like mm -hmm. keeping. I mean, I like it organized. I'm I'm a yeah. cleaner. And so anyway, um, for someone listening who's like, hey, I may need Cali service. What does that look like? Or like, yeah. talk to the the people listening, going because you may be talking to somebody right now that's yep. saying, oh, I've got a little too much stuff, or I don't know even know where to start. So. If you can't park your car in your garage, that's a problem, right? Right, yeah. I think, and, unless you set it up as a home yeah, gym or something. But exactly. I, I, I sell houses to people and I'm like, they're like, yeah, we'll just put all this stuff in the garage. I'm like, don't you want to put your car in there? Because it's going to be cold and snowy and rainy. And Freezing, yes. <laughs> the garage is awesome. So don't junk it up. So anyway. Yeah, no, that's such a perfect segue because it's something that I also suffer from. We've been renovating our house for three years. Okay. And so 
that's been where all the construction materials go. And it's such a great example too, of your home, not supporting your lifestyle for exactly those reasons. Right. And so, um, you know, what it could look like to work with me and even using the example of my own home is, is reaching that point of, I have too much, I'm overwhelmed and I need more guidance. So yeah. what it could look like is me walking them through what they need to do in sort of more of a DIY capacity yep. or me and my team actually being hands on and saying, let's come through. We're going to guide you through the decisions you need to make right. today. We're going to help you get the stuff out of the space that no longer serves you. So for the example of my garage, when it's junked up, we lose access to back stock. And so it's like, oh no, we ran out of toilet paper. I didn't see that coming because visually I, I wasn't in the right places to have those clues. We have a back stock fridge where food goes to, to waste if we're not having a, a healthy cycle of right, moving it through it, right. From grocery shopping to moving into the fridge where we've meal prepped upstairs, you know, which is our main um, main living area. And so things like that, not being able to bring your car into the garage, uh, for me, some of those symptoms can be- It's just sad for your car, yeah. cause it's gotta stay outside in the cold. So it's outside in the cold. Uh, you know, when I could pull into my garage, I have a trash can right there. Smart. And so these are maintenance tactics that help support your lifestyle. Also too, when I'm pulling up to drop off with that incredibly dirty car that I would love to get washed through, right. you know, some of my favorites here in town. Yeah. Um, and so things like that, you know, it's not quite supporting that lifestyle. And sure. so, you know, what you do get in the benefits of utilizing my service is it puts a time box on your project, which a lot of people struggle with. They go for those DIY methods and, yeah. and I'm here to support it. You know, I'm here to provide the education, right. to provide the guidance, to tackle those on their own. And that's a lot of what I focus on through my social media. And then from there, what does it look like if they say, I've been saying I was gonna tackle this garage for six months and I'm not there, but I'm still just feeling that feeling of frustration. Mm -hmm. And I really want to, that moment of pulling the car back in the garage. Yeah. So for those things, you know, we can come in and, and just within a matter of days, we can change the entirety of the space. And those are some of my favorite projects. You know, people always, clients are always like, I'm, I'm so embarrassed by this space. Mm -hmm. And first off, nothing scares me. Well, and I think that's part, you know, I was getting ready to say that too, because a lot of people are embarrassed. You know, they'll yeah. say, I don't want you to come over and look at my house because we haven't got it ready. I'm like, listen, mm -hmm. I've seen a million houses. Oh, yeah. You can't, it's not going to be scary for me, but they mm -hmm. think it's scary. And you've probably seen a ton of clutter. It's yeah. not a big deal. Like, yeah. just call and we'll come over, you know, like yeah. I'll come over and look at your house or, you know, and then you'll mm -hmm. come organize it. And um, yeah, I think overcoming that, of like, that objection in your head is step one, probably like yeah. one, I guess you have to define, I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I am the problem. Um, like my workbench down in my basement and Carly's yeah. probably laughing right about now, listen to this. And, um, <laughs> and so, yes, I have a problem and I need, I need help. And then do you offer like, um, accountability? Like instead of you coming in and doing it and you're like, all right, you're going to do the DIY project, but mm -hmm. if you don't do it, and by the end of this month, you pay me $500 or something like that. Yeah. That would be a good like, Absolutely. penalty. Is that part of your services? It's not, but I am going to get on my website tonight. And, have that and I work there. off commission. So, you yeah, know, I get a little. <laughs> <laughs> the accountability commission fee for Colin. I like it. I yeah. Like it. Yeah. And there, you know, there are just so many things. It's, it is very vulnerable, right? And, it is. And uh, I always tell clients, I'm like, I, I get really excited. And going back to Marie Kondo, my favorite gift ever is in one of her episodes, she goes, I love mess. And I do too, yeah. because what that means is that transformation will be life-changing. And so that can look like a space that I haven't used my garage mm -hmm. in forever, or this used to be my craft room. And now this is something that it's just gotten out of hand. And I just don't even use this space anymore or a guest bedroom that guests have not been able to stay in for years. So how do I help people reclaim their space? Sure. And to me, that is so exciting. And so it's, you know, I, I always joke with clients when they say, I'm embarrassed to show you it. And I'm like, I would be disappointed if it weren't, right. you know, a, a, a cluttered, you know, just really great opportunity for me. Opportunity, I love <laughs> To it. make a difference yes. in their lives. Yes. And, and that's what it's all about. And, and those values. That and can they work excited. along with you too? Because I mean, you know, you're going through stuff like, oh, I want to keep that t-shirt. And are you sure you want to keep that t-shirt? You haven't worn it since, you know, the 1980s yeah. or whatever. And you're like, yeah, I do want it. And then so you're like, okay, we'll allow that one. Yeah. Carly got me onto the Marie Kondo kick a long time ago. She was, she was 
brilliant enough to read the book. She followed it. I came home one day and all of her clothes at the closet were piled on the bed. I was like, okay, here we go. And so, uh, but she went through them all and they all brought her joy that she has now, you know? And so I, I love the idea of it. I think it's great. And I just think, I love that you're posting about it because I don't think enough people know about it. So service wise, can, I mean, like, I'm sure it's the full gamut. Like if you said, hey, we want to clean up your garage or basement or whatever, you'll a to Z, t tubs, labeled, yep. spreadsheets, whatever you want, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Like what is like a, like if we went to Mitch's house and went down in his basement, it looks like a just cluttered craziness. What, how would you tackle that? Yeah, and so, um, so for some clients, we do one, one part at a time and that okay. sort of builds the trust in the process. And so, and then for others, it could be a whole home. So a recent client that I was gonna work with uh, mentioned they needed to move things out of certain spaces in their home. And I was like, well, where could these items go if you'd still like to keep them? And so they're like, oh, don't get us started on the garage. And I was like, I'd love to see your garage. <laughs> and I was really excited yeah. for it. And they showed it to me. And, and you yes, look really excited it, right now. It was about very like... exciting. And I was like, I have to do their garage as well. And I was super, super excited for it. And, um, and so what that will look like too is just, you know, we're gonna clear out that garage and then help them say, this is important, I wanna keep it. And then also too, you know, a lot of people around here have hobbies and, you know, you may have fishing poles mm -hmm. or hunting gear and things that, um, holiday decor, all the things that need a place to go sure. because they're still important. Um, but what happens too is you could sort of box yourself out of those storage areas and just say, I can't deal with this quite right now. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is is we'll work through those spaces um, through a project plan that I'll create. And so we're going through individually and, and to answer your question as well on what it looks like to, to work with the clients. That is preferred, of course, because I feel like that makes it most meaningful to your lifestyle. Sure. We're getting to know one another. And even as you're talking through things like, I love this shirt. It's, you know, it brings such great memories and, and uh, maybe it doesn't have a space or it doesn't need a space in your closet. Maybe that needs to be memorialized in some other way. Mm -hmm. So a memory bin or, you know, hey, my son's artwork. I love keeping that and displaying it. Well, mm -hmm. there are different tools and organization methods that we can do that. We can honor your memories, mm -hmm. you know, and, and part of it is going through and, and, you know, my team will group like items. And sometimes, you know, it's something that, of course, you're, you're not going to do very often on your own, just collectively take your entire garage out right? and say, OK, what does it look like to group these things and say, you know what, I don't need 25 fishing poles or, you know, different things like that. You start to see what it looks like all in one place. Oftentimes we've replaced items that we couldn't find. And so then you sort of have that moment of, OK, what is right sizing this amount of items from mm -hmm. our home? Mm -hmm. um, part of that, too, is I love to, um, you know, as, as we're going through and we say what, what stays, what needs to move to other locations as we're continuing to work through the home. Um, just because that decluttering process is so important, we like to carry that off mm -hmm. to get it out mm -hmm. of sight, out of mind quickly. Like we, and like, don't let them re <laughs> restore it somewhere. And yeah, exactly. That way, you're not like, I'll deal with this later. But then you start sneaking back into that bag. There's a reason we use like black trash bags, especially too when you're getting rid of kids' toys, and you're like, no they do not bags. need to see this in yeah. the house. <laughs> So things like that, that help say, I've made this decision, we're sticking to it. So we support that in bringing off some of those items that we declutter as we, um, as we work through the homes and through those projects and the different days that we schedule. Um, the final piece of course is, okay, we've right-sized what you have as far as your items. Now, what does it look like lifestyle-wise? Right. So, you know, there are certain items that you access daily. And I always say those need the prime real estate, which you know what I'm talking about, There you right? go. So this is not the top shelf. You know, that's more of the, right. the things that you use less I'm putting frequently. my hands on it every day. Exactly. Yeah. And so that needs to be in the most accessible place. And so what makes sense for your lifestyle and the way that you access items? Are there certain things like it's soccer season? So maybe too, we need to in your mud room set up something that had set equipment. That way it's not just sort of sitting there. I know we've all got our our gloves and mittens out, things like that. How are we solving for those lifestyle needs yeah. in the way that things may be evolving through the seasons, clothing rotations for kids, for us, um, different things, challenges like that. I always like to talk through them. Then we do that final product install. And that's that like Instagram oh. moment where it's like, oh, and I love it so much. I, I can get pretty creative budget wise as well, um, which is which is great too. I mean, here in uh, Johnson City, of course, we have some great resources as far as, you know, 
town, places that we can shop. Yeah. And so I get really creative with my shopping going across the city. Um, and then also to just try to bring this really cohesive aesthetic to the space. Mm -hmm. uh, that way it's very visually appealing, but not at the expense of the lifestyle. It's still very much supporting like, I didn't put this here because, you know, it's it's pretty. I put this here because it's your most access item. Right. And so things like that is it's very important to me. That way when I leave and there's always that moment of we had this exciting reveal and now I leave the house and I'm like, I really hope this works out. So I'll check in with my clients after and say, how are your systems working? Do we need to sort of talk through any edits? And it's of course always welcome. You know, you'll, you'll make adjustments as needed. Sure. Uh, ensuring that it supports their lifestyle That's in an cool. optimal way. And you can have the $500 fee again later. Like if I come back in two months yeah. and we're back where we started, you're paying me again or something like that. We'll just yeah, work that in. Exactly. Yeah, we'll just work that into our agreement. <laughs> Um, ballpark it for me on pricing yeah. for like maybe a garage and then like a basement or, you know, you probably do it by room or containers. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like, I don't know. That's yeah. but I'm hoping the people listening don't know either. And they're <laughs> like, this sounds really cool. I want to get it on board, but it's probably $10,000 a, a minute or something. I don't know. Yeah. It is, it's a lot more affordable than people think it, um, it is. I keep all my pricing on my website, which of course we'll link around this. Yes, ad, it'll be in the episode. show notes. Yeah. yeah, and it's so hard, um, you know, and that's- Because that's you don't know how many garbage is in people's- yeah. Exactly, and things like, you know, I did a playroom and I was like, this is great. I think this will take, you know, just a quick day. And, um, you know, so initially we started that as a four hour project, but it went into eight hours because okay. there was a lot of finessing. We sure. implemented toy rotations. There are hundreds of tiny little toys, <laughs> all these different and things. And we got a rotation. You know, oh, it's Tuesday, yeah. you can't play with that. You got to yeah, wait so till Wednesday. Then you're just like, are we sorting Legos or it, the space really dictates it? Or if, you know, we're doing, uh, we're supporting a move, which I love. Um, and, you know, I'm growing my team and, and building it so we can support more of those things and say, what would it look like for you as, a, you know, as someone who moved here mm -hmm. to just be set up and ready to hit the town, go to all our little breweries and, and just start getting out there and networking right away. And you go to, home to a perfectly set up house because you have had it organized upon your arrival. How cool would that be? Yeah. And that's something I'm so excited We're for. We're going to have to tie you in on our stuff because that would be cool. Like, yeah. People, because they do show up and then there's their stuff that's all coming and it's like, oh my gosh. And I feel yeah. that... I, I love selling houses, but the worst part about it is like, hey, you got to move. You got to pack up all your stuff and then you got to unpack all your stuff. And exactly. that's not fun. Yeah. And sometimes you're tucking things away or you need to declutter really sure. before yep. you move. Oh, um, we I know. did not do that before we shipped everything from California right. to Tennessee. There's so many things when it arrived. Especially when it's coming from California. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I had some like, friends and they moved mm -hmm. and it was $40,000 to move all their stuff from California here. I was like, holy expensive. cow. I was like, yeah. why don't you just buy new stuff? Leave it all behind. You oh, know, yeah, exactly. They it, were they were like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, our movers upped the price quite a bit once they got everything on the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, good call. Okay. Yeah, well played. Um, you are not getting a great review, but uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we have no other choice at this point. So four hours of you helping organize costs mm. about what? Yeah. So, um, depending so on how many team members you it need, could be, depending on how many team members, but uh, you know, a ballpark would be expect about a hundred dollars an hour, a okay. hundred plus when you're yeah. getting in additional team sure. members. Um, I, it's funny. I, I always tell people to, you know, look at that price tag in the lens too of, you know, I've been renovating my home for so many, you know, so many years now. And so I think about the way that I've paid the contractors and what's equitable in this mm -hmm. area, both for that expertise as well as, you know, I always feel too, I'm a very, very hard worker. So an eight hour day on a garage, you know, can be quite a bit of progress. And and I have some of those transformations on my Instagram. Which right, you're not like I love. taking smoke breaks every 10 minutes. Exactly, gotcha. yeah. You're getting and after so it. So I, I work uh, pretty tirelessly. And a lot of that too comes from having this as a side hustle for gotcha. a year. And yeah. so in those fragments of time, I was like, we gotta go. We, we gotta, gotta get go. this done. That's right. Um, also too, the very fun part is that product install at the end. Yeah. So I'm also racing to that fun moment of like, okay, let's make this beautiful. Yeah. And so um, just sort of really quickly trying to work my way there. But, but again, for anybody 
listening, interested in this, of course, uh, check out my website. I have um, an option to make an inquiry there. And then I do an in-person consult and we really talk through those needs. And um, I put my project management hat on, of nice. course, and say, what would this look like? Or could I break this up into mm -hmm. different parts that way too? If the budget's not quite there for a right. whole home, yeah. um, we could start to tackle some of those most problematic spaces. Yeah, and, and you could say, I want my whole home in two years done. And like, exactly. we're gonna do a room every quarter or something. Exactly. I yeah, I think that's a really great way to look at it. And especially too, for all those times, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of it as well, even with a decade of project management experience, uh, not breaking it down into small enough parts and just True. saying, well, what if, you know, that garage I grabbed, you know, a bin or a couple items a day and started mm -hmm. to work through that, what would that compounding effect over time look like? And of course, you know, taking the same approach with your home right. and saying, you know, just like you would say, I'm going to remodel this, then that, and we're going to work, chip away at it. What if your organization supported it in the same way? Yeah. So what's your most commonly used space? Is that your kitchen or is your closet just mm -hmm. overflowing or non-functional? Uh, so those types of spaces are always really great and getting those big victories first. I love mm -hmm. it. I love yeah. it. And um, how do you, do you habit coach a little bit too? Because mm -hmm. there have been steps for people to get into this situation, right? Yeah. And then there are other people who don't get into these situations. They're like, mm -hmm. they're working on my wife is great about taking things out of the house, you know, or getting rid of stuff on the regular. So what are some habits you can yeah. share with our listeners to so they don't look up one day and they only see, they don't <laughs> see any carpet anywhere. I've been in these houses and like, like oh, well, the kitchen's over there somewhere yeah. past all this stuff. Yeah, it's, I am a productivity junkie. So I, every hack book, productivity, I cannot get enough of it. And so that does translate into my work, of course. Yeah. I think the biggest thing too, and from being a working mom and a demanding career, so much of it is we just, a lot of us don't have that village or, you know, it's just too much to manage. Sure. I always joke that maintaining our home is a full-time job in its own. It really is. And then there's parenting. That's another full-time job. Yeah. And, and then there's your full-time job. And so there's all these things that are just sort of pulling at you in ways that you say, oh, let's just put this in the garage mm -hmm. right now. And so a lot of it too is just that recognition that it's too much for one person. So reaching out for help or what can I take off my plate? Right. Um, that's often the thing that I ask myself the most. I'm like, what did I put on my plate? You know, when you're sort of looking at that endless to-do list and mm -hmm. saying, you know, what is actually pushing me towards my goals here? And so within the goal of an organized home, you know, just getting really critical about what does that look like? Um, you know, is it freeing up spaces? So gosh, you know, there's, there's expired food in the pantry. Maybe that's a great start. Let's purge the expired mm -hmm. food. What's the easiest thing we can do to get started? And that's, I love sure. expiration dates. I yeah. put expiration dates on clothes. I say, if I don't wear this in a month, it's gone. You know, oh, different things good. like that. Yeah. Anything can have an expiration date, especially if you're struggling to get any clutter out of your house. And also too, there are different uh, practices where mm -hmm. you can say, okay, one item in, two out. That's, oh, there you that's go. bold. Yeah. Or maybe one in, one out. And, uh, and then having those dedicated places in your homes to support that. So, you know, here, like you have a box for recycling, maybe you have a box for items that need to go to Goodwill or Facebook Marketplace, buy nothing groups, different yeah. things like that. And sometimes, you know, that's what it's looked like for me in the, the past month is getting really critical about all of this is just taking my time, my most precious resource. Sure. And I don't want these items to have that anymore. But right. what would it look like to feel a little bit better about that release yeah. of them, especially for the items that I, I bought? <laughs> and it's just like driving a car oh, up yeah. a lot, right? It's, it's immediately depreciated. Well, I was going to say, yeah, talk to in the feeling you have. Yeah. So like, talk to us about the, you know, your clients, how they feel after you're, mm. you're done. Like yeah. you come in and it's chaos and then you leave and it's, oh, it's, Oh, it's, it's the most rewarding feeling. And that's that rate. That's part of the race to the finish is just the beautifying as well as just that big client hug at the end mm -hmm. where they're just sort of overcome with emotions. And those are my favorite, most rewarding projects is when I close that door and I say, let me leave you to your space now. Like similar to those, those shows that you yeah. see, right? Yeah. And you're Do you like, have okay, the, like the giant the picture that rolls away? Like this was your garage <laughs> before I got here. And, and here it is. Here's your <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to see where those resources are in Johnson City to yeah. get that happening. Mitch and um, I can build that up for you. Yeah, I'm going to sign y'all up for that. He's got a wall over there that rolls around. <laughs> yeah. Maybe heavy to carry around, Mitch. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can make it happen. It'll yeah. be good. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we'll work that into your contract. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, okay, so one piece of advice would be when you bring something in, take something out. Mm -hmm. 
And then the other one is just maybe time batch it a little bit yeah. during the week. Like just focus, say, 10 minutes, mm-hmm. 30 minutes on just cleaning or exactly. organizing here and there. Yeah, and just sort of noticing too, you know, is is there certain, I, I call it friction okay. in different spaces. And yeah. so, um, for example, a lot of times too, I'm installing those those beautiful acrylic bins, right? That we all love. The yes. home edit, you They're know, so look. Great. But what they can serve for too is is maybe you have that that high access area, mm-hmm. supplements, medicines, different things where it's, you know, imagine yourself saying, I need to get out the um, the Advil, but you're taking out five things, right. you know. Are there any places in your home where you're sort of recognizing those opportunities yeah. to say, let me put this in a bin and then it's okay, um, here's the cold medicine. <laughs> I'm sure we all have that on our counters right now. Yeah. <laughs> Endlessly with the kids bringing everything home. Okay, let me go to this category of items, uh-huh. you know, the first aid, whatever it may be. And there you are, you have those things. So how can you reduce friction in accessing items you need? Sure. Um, what are those simple solutions to say, let me take this from being five steps to one step. Um, I love different techniques like that, that could say, okay, this space felt very overwhelming. But that incorporation of a, of a solution of an organizing product could solve for it there. And, you know, feel free, find me on Facebook, on there Instagram. I, like I could talk about it, obviously, all day. Yeah, she, like, <laughs> super excited. Yes, and, and so it brings me so much joy to say, you know, and even when people, um, I'm in groups on Facebook, and they, they'll share a picture, and they're like, what would you do here? And I'm like, oh, I would just, you know, that Zach <laughs> Galifianakis, where yes. the... The, all yeah. the formulas are going through. I That's what I do. And when I work in clients' homes, I take pictures. And then at night, I'm like, okay, so tomorrow I've got this. And okay, I'm going to do. Sweet. And I'm like mentally mapping yeah. it in my head before I go. Everything's so, created twice. Once in your mind and once in real life. It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what do you, what, what's a tip for paper? Handling paper that comes into your house. Mail, magazines, homework, yeah. whatever. So my biggest tip for that is anything that's junk mail, gone immediately right. so walk straight to your trash can or your recycling and that bin. is gone exactly or your recycling bin there you go and so those need to leave and then that way too you have your action item so maybe even just quickly opening the mail yep. and then for me i have on my calendar an admin uh time block okay. so we talked about task yeah. batching so this sort of ties back into that as well is where you say okay i'm not dealing with this today but I'm dealing with the right things Mm -hmm. when that time comes. And so that's something that's really helped me too. Um, I tend to get squirrel syndrome. I'm like, oh, I need to do this here here or there. Mm -hmm. But then it really helped to be able to say, not today. And then you you have a time for that. There's a place for that. And so even with cleaning or on... You know, Mondays I reset my pantry, sure, and I go get my groceries. Nice. And so I see everything that ha- that I have. I maybe meal plan a little bit and say, "Oh, I have this. You know, this rice. I'd love to make a great dish with that." So different things like that, and then you are um, slowly working your way to towards more mindful consumption. Yeah, that's a good spot. Um, yeah. Is Joseph like this too, or are you like banging the drum at the house to keep everybody organized? I- I'm a little bit of beating the drum. I always joke that my number one goal in organizing anything is, you know, at one point in my life, I will not have to tell my husband where everything is in our house. (laughs) I don't know. And then there's the man look. Like, (laughs) I'll go into the... (laughs) <laughs> to the pantry and I'll be like, I don't think we have chips. And Carly's like, did you man look, you know? And so she'll come and be like, here you go. There are the chips or whatever. I'm like, I swear I looked. You know, oh, I love that. I, my version of that is, oh, it must be something only a woman can see. That's, that's true too. I think it's hidden in woman magic. And you something. can only imagine the look I get. It was the loving <laughs> reception of that snarky <laughs> remark. Yes, yes. It's fun. It keeps it keeps yeah. the light banter going between us. It's great. Um <laughs> Okay, so you do this for individuals. Do you do it for companies? Yes, I do. I yeah, so like a business could hire you to come organize it? They could, yeah. And so I have volunteered at my son's school recently, which was fantastic. That's awesome. Um, it was great. As long as you have, you know, a place that needs something systemized. So, yeah. you know, that could be a business that says, oh, my gosh, the, the way that we, you know, our, our materials are set up in our stock room, where employees go to get extra post-its, different things sure. like that. Um, all of that, you know, if it, if it doesn't make sense for your workflow or maybe you carry a lot of inventory and that inventory is not managed very well. Right. Um, coffee shops, too. Or just sort oh, of navigating. Yeah, where you're in a small space with a lot of stuff. Exactly. So these are all areas of, of opportunity. Yeah. And so, um, so, yeah, I think it's super fun, too. That's something that I've started to get into. But, of course, I'm, you know, making that transition from, sure. from full-time work and side hustling this yeah. to full-time. And so 
I'd love more of those opportunities, of course, in yeah. Austin City. Yeah, and then even some nonprofits, I think, right? Exactly. You, you wouldn't mind yeah. helping out those folks. And let's say somebody's listening and they're in some other city mm -hmm. and, and they want to start a, an organizing business. What would your first step for them be? Yeah, reach out to me. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went to a conference last year with a lot of professional organizers uh -huh. and the community that we built was so wonderful because I mean, even the, the professional organizers in town who are doing this too, you know, we've met up and, you know, there's some points where some of them are, can't take a job that's, you know, or, or don't want to, you know, right. there, there might be a preference on the type of work you do, the specialty, and then things that are not in your wheelhouse. Right. So it's such a great opportunity to say, hey, there, there's room for all of us here. Yeah. And so let's support one another. Of course, as a business owner, you're also like, okay, I like what's unique about me? Like what makes me different? And how do I stay focused on that and, sure. and deliver that in a really great way that's still supportive to those around me? And so the community that I've built both here and, and through that network mm -hmm. of professional organizers across the U.S. has been absolutely fantastic. That's and cool. Sharing those war stories of, mm -hmm. of learning things the hard way. And so, um, you know, we do, we do not declutter and tell. You know, we're, we're not talking about what we see inside of homes or anything like that. There's um, a code. There's a code of ethics. There you for go. Sure. And so, um, so yeah, that's something that, it, that has been really great. And, and I would just say just get started, just just do it. Um, I have a sort of a, I have to overlearn things before I get started and that slows me down a lot. Um, you know, especially now that I don't have those three hours in the car. There you go, right? <laughs> just got three hours to organize every day though, exactly. so that's better. Yeah, so now I'm just building that experience versus just building all the things that are just floating in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could come up with the mind organization system, that'd be good. Oh, yes. <laughs> Get rid of all the squirrel people out there. Here's how you fix your squirrel thoughts. That'd be mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, what's been the most challenging, difficult thing with being a, an entrepreneur for you? Well, learning all the things. You know, I tell my husband every day I do so many hard things, so many scary things. Mm -hmm. um, like right now, I've got to remap my uh, the way my email sent, you know, just di different technology changes, all these things that you're like, this is my problem now. Um, figuring out your, you know, your client resource management tool, you know, different things like that. It's, it's something new every day. Mm -hmm. However, I will say um, through various networking opportunities here in Johnson City, there's so much support here for business owners. And that's something that I'm so excited to be able to dedicate more time to mm -hmm. because, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, um, you know, there are so many groups uh, that do have networking opportunities, mm -hmm. Spark Plaza, Founders Forge, all of these um, just great, great resources there for are entrepreneurs. Some ones, for sure. It's fantastic. And that takes so much of the scariness out of it, yeah. just being surrounded by peers. And you're like, we're all doing hard stuff every single day. And, um, are we doing it the right way? Who knows? But we get to sort of swap like, oh, this didn't work well. Maybe, you know, use the site or this tool, different things like that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, now I just thought, forgot, I got a text and I forgot what I was going to be doing. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm squirreling again. Um, what do your, you and your husband like to do for fun in town? Oh, so we like to go to tiebreakers. Um, oh. I, of course, uh, frequent Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, yep. That's a big that's one. That's true. You like ski ball. <laughs> Ski ball, uh, the jump park, you know, we're just love all of those things. We are huge, huge fans of Juniper. It's so love good. Love Juniper. We do too. Uh, it's so, really, really good. Yeah, so eating and all the kids play stuff yeah. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I love it. Do you drink coffee? Or are you a coffee shop person? I'm a huge coffee shop person. Tell us your top three coffee shops for Johnson City. Yeah, so Open Doors is Yay. fantastic. Um, the Marions are awesome. And then, um, oh my gosh, just all of them are fantastic. My my mind is completely going blank right now. This is um, good. I thought you were... Blues Brews. Blues is great. They are yep. fantastic. Stillwater Coffee. Yeah. That's my, that's my hot spot for when I meet other entrepreneurs yeah. that are between here and Bristol. We They're usually, awesome. And, we yeah. frequent there. Um, I think I've taught all of them what a red eye is. Have you ever heard of I know what a red eye is. <laughs> yeah. It's a regular cup of coffee with a shot in, dropped in, right? A shot of espresso, espresso which is like... There. Like I drink like heart stopping amounts of caffeine. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so. That's pretty strong. My friend Juan Carlos gets the black eye. And I think yeah. Mike Marion, that's his, his go-to. And the black eye is two shots of espresso, I oh. believe. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's a lot. Um, okay, so you also were sort of an influencer, right? 
I'm like you've got a few followers you want to get more followers i'd like to have more yeah. listeners more followers on our real estate stuff too so. i would love more followers more engagement how did you become an inf influencer person or what and then where are the tiers <laughs> of influence and how do you like where do you say i'm um, yeah anyway yeah. do you know educate us Sure thing. So, okay, I'm going to take you back to sort of the start of my organizing business with this story because um, I was trying to think, you know, what could we do and, and what could be our own? And so, you know, I was thinking of what aligned with my expertise. We had just moved into a new home. Like, had you started like, hey, we're going to be influencers? Like, this was the goal? That was the goal at the time. What, um, is it a thought like you're like, hey, if we do this and we yeah. do it on the cameras and stuff, yeah. we're going to blow it up? Yeah, it, it started to evolve into that over time. Okay. Like as it started to pick up, you know, I, I told my husband, I was like, I, you know, I, I think organizing could be a great profession. That would be really fun and aligns really well with my skill mm -hmm. set. Low cost to getting started with that business, unless you are a serial course taker like I am. <laughs> I just buy every <laughs> course, over learn my way into everything. Yeah, and I'm so, hundred thousand dollars in. <laughs> College debt again, yeah. just for learning all this stuff. <laughs> exactly. So that aspiring professional organizer, I could I could save you a lot of costs and hey, give you, you some cheats along yeah, the way. That alone. Um, but going back to my personal journey, you know, I told my husband we moved in this new house. I was like, could I spend? Um, I just ballparked it. I was like, could I spend like a thousand dollars across our house in organizing products because we were really starting from scratch. Um, and then what I had too is just this hodgepodge of years of like, oh, here's this, you know, I found this at Walmart and I grabbed this. And so you had a lot of things that were sitting next to each other that weren't quite a cohesive aesthetic mm -hmm. and, and weren't supporting the space in the way we needed to as we moved into this new home. And, uh, and so I started uh, organizing our pantry, our kitchen, all of these different things. And I kept joking. I was like, the one thing that I hadn't shared on Instagram, and I was like, it'll be the last thing I share was my fridge ah. organization because there was no organization to it. Um, so I posted my first, what I, what I, you know, later dubbed as fridge glamour shots and uh, it started picking up steam and I was like, it wasn't even like the most beautiful thing. Um, it was fine, but people loved it. And there were certain things that they, you know, for me, I, I love to have ready-made meals. We have a very busy lifestyle. And so a day of meal prep, um, you know, and then just, you know, I was able to shrink that over time to say, how do I get more efficient with this time mm -hmm. with the way I plan? Um, I have a lot of meals too that I make with very similar ingredients. And so my goal was to use up all our ingredients, reduce our food waste. And so through that, I was supporting both our family, but then also too, whoa, here's some Instagram followers there you from go. it. Yeah. So that started to build and those, those, those fridge glamour shots really started taking off. And at that point I was like, okay, hey, what wait a minute. Look like? <laughs> we got something going here. Yeah. And so, um, but I really wanted to share more organization tips, okay. tricks. Um, yeah. You know, this month I'll be doing a declutter challenge, which is absolutely free. But what that looks like too is just more guided prompts of like, okay, what's the thing you hate most in your house? Like maybe get rid of that today. So I can put my <laughs> tool bench on there and then be a part of the challenge. Exactly. This will be good. You All can right. do it. And you know, just just counting up, you know, I'd, I'd love to see what the cumulative total would be of oh. items that we're removing from yeah. all these different homes. That's and cool. So, you might need to call the landfill and tell them, watch out. Oh, yes. I've, I've got a great junk guy in town <laughs> who can CP's support all junk. of our needs. Exactly. He yes. is fantastic. Super nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, what did I not ask you that I should have that huh? you'd like to share with our listeners? I think the only thing that we didn't completely touch on um, that I'll circle back yeah. to in the vein of decluttering is um, just... One thing that I've been doing, and, and I really wanted to be really rooted in values, especially here, um, you know, working with our nonprofits in the area mm -hmm. and saying, you know, I've reached out to them, reach out to me if I haven't reached out to you, eh? Um, if you're a nonprofit, but also, um, you know, what items do they take? So, you know, there's there's different shelters or sure. um, different groups that take certain So repurposing items. the things that you're removing from people's houses. Exactly, and so taking those to uh, these nonprofits in the area, you know, there are different ones that'll say, I need coats this month, or there's a drive to, to collect purses. And so it's such a great call to action mm -hmm. for those who are chipping away at their clutter to say, oh, hey, I could do this. Yeah. And so I love that, you know, working with those uh, with those different groups. And so that's something that I'm continuing to do more of and, and helping those clients declutter too, sure. because they're like, oh, I do want it to go somewhere, you know, where it's really valued. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know just the place. I know just the and place. And so it's yeah, really awesome. helpful. And, and that's something that I, I definitely wanted to touch on, especially to, um, to help with, you know, th those items 
you're like, I paid a lot for this. And, you know, even though it, it sort of depreciates as, as, as it leaves its, <laughs> wherever it's mm-hmm. coming from and, and that time in our home and that, that use, it can still be loved. It can sure. still go to this really great cause. And so those are things that I really enjoy about the work that I do. And so as we proceed through that decluttering challenge in February, and as you know, we, we continue our work together now yeah. that we're just kicking off all these great That's contractual right. agreements. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's all binding because it's, yeah. on, the it's on the podcast now. That's right. <laughs> Carly, I'm making us money. <laughs> okay, how can our listeners connect with you? So find me on Instagram, of course. I have a few a few followers over there. I love um, What's your add... handle or yeah. name or whatever the slang word is for that? So I am organizing for life. For life. On there. And then you can also find me on Facebook. You will see me in all the various groups and moving to Johnson City, those different ones. Um, I'm very active in those. Um, Your website? Across the community. My website is organizingforlife.org. Dot org? Because of organizing. Exactly. Smart. 100% so smart. not because dot com was taken. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I love it. And uh, last question, what gets you just super fired up? Like, yeah, what's like, you're just like, wow, let's go. Oh, I was like, like angry. No, <laughs> no, like just jazzed and like yeah. super excited, pumped. I think it's safe to say it's organizing. Yeah. Um, I could talk about it forever. I probably talk about it in my sleep. Um, I'd have to ask my husband, <laughs> husband for like, that. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about bins yeah. and tubs and baskets and stuff. Oh yeah, and he like he falls asleep on the couch watching football a lot. But maybe this is why. Maybe I talk okay. about organizing in my sleep. But it does. It gets me truly fired up, especially to those those just life changing transformations. Yeah. Uh, there are some that I just I still lovingly look back on, and I, I just feel that moment yeah. of like you almost see tears in their eyes and just feel those for the floor. Yes, exactly. And, um, you know, even one, we, um, it was for a family member. We changed the floor and she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I painted, I did all the things. Oh, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, even remodel some. Even, even remodeled something, you know, just from our experience and, you know, that's, that may be something we delve into eventually. But that's um, cool. it was fantastic because the space was complete when yeah. we finished and, and that just felt so great. Um, it was re- reclaiming a craft studio and sort of this hobby that's space. Awesome. And so I, I just, that feeds my soul so yeah. much. And so I think just that organization and then just that final moment of leaving a job and even like looking back on the pictures and being like, that felt great. Um, also too, sometimes I'm like, re- I, sh- I should have, you know, I'm still rearranging in my mind, mm-hmm. um, but also just really relishing that, that just great feeling um, of knowing that I've made a difference in someone's lives and, and just the meaningfulness that that has versus the work that I've been doing where, you know, maybe a project lasts a year. And oh, so it takes yeah. quite a long time to right. get that payoff versus changing someone's, you know, entire, uh, like a room in a child's bedroom within 24 hours. It's a drastically different space. Uh, that's another thing that we did recently, um, you know, an eight hour day and then another hour product install massively transformed it. And so those are the things that I just love so much. And so that, that fires awesome. me up yeah, in I the right tell. way. <laughs> I can tell. Well, thank you so much for yeah. coming on the podcast. Thank you for mm-hmm. allowing us to have a great conversation. I hope our listeners just really enjoyed mm-hmm. learning about organizing. And yeah. obviously, if you want to help her mm-hmm. um, call her, connect with her on Instagram, the Facebook uh, my spaces i don't know yeah you can you can <laughs> find friends her. is that still a thing i don't know i'm dating myself once again yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it and so you your place will be a lot neater because you brought kylie in and so okay. thank you so much it was yeah. a pleasure thank you until so next much. time i'm colin johnson with the colin and carly group and keller williams realty if you want to move here and have kylie put all your stuff away like you just show up and you walk into your house and it's like chip and jojo just put it all out there and got it perfect then I'd love to help you find a house here in Johnson City. If you want to build wealth through real estate, we love doing that. And so, yeah, I look forward to connecting with you online too. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.